Okay, so there's been a lot that's transpired uh, in the last few days on this uh, Florida International University bridge, pedestrian bridge failure. And one of the one of the strangest things that happens on the internet is that people tend to latch on, and I guess we're all guilty of it, but I mean, they latch on to these ideas that they've just heard. And one of these, it's almost mythical now that these these uh, cable stays or these pipe stays, whatever you want to call them, were not structural. And I just wanted to show people, I've looked through all, most all the documents and everything that I find is, is shows that they were there was some intent behind the these uh, stays and pylons. You can see here the it says the tapering of the pylon reaches a height of approximately 109 feet. Blah blah blah. Let's see. Let's go down here. The stays and pylons. The stays and pylon provide the required structural design to meet the pedestrian loads for the harmonic conditions of natural frequencies and uh, create dramatic, you know, signature aesthetic. So, sure, but here's the thing, and I'm going to show you uh, what I'm talking about here in just a second, okay? I think that there has been, this is one of those big blunders, okay? These, uh, in the minds of engineers, I believe they thought that these were going to provide uh, additional stiffness. Look here. Um, the size of the stay pipes and spacing were designed to provide additional stiffness. The structural the structure meets the design criteria without the stays. They are an additional structural feature. An additional structural feature. Okay, you don't have structural features that do not carry loads. Okay. Um, Provide to, provided to meet the natural frequency requirements. Okay, so what they're talking about there is, and I'll give you an example of this, is uh, we used to have this little dachshund, okay, and, and his feet, his legs were spread apart just so right, and we lived uh, just a certain distance, you know, and we lived in this house that had a big living area, and I actually built the house, so I knew how it was built, and I designed and built the house, that's what I do. I'll give you a little more background on myself in just a second. But this little dachshund could get, uh, could start trotting across the floor, and in, in a few seconds, the whole house would shake. It would boom, 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 boom. You know, he would start off with a little trot. And what that was was his trot uh, created a frequency in that floor, and it reverberated, and he was able to, with a consistent trot, he was able to amplify that vibration. And none of us could do it. We could run across the floor and, you know, we'd have a little jar and I know you're gonna say, well, you should have created a big jar. <laughs> but this dog, this little 15 pound dachshund could create a, a harmonic in the floor that was greater than what I could, you know. And um, that's just an example. Uh, what they're saying is, is that you know, when, when foot traffic is going across this bridge, there, there's a tendency for there, this, this vibration, this harmonic to be created that places additional loads. Now, I read, also read in the design criteria where these stays were actually going to be, and I couldn't find it, I found it the first time. That's what I based my first video on. And <laughs> just a quick, a lot of people question, you know, they, you know, I'm just a country bumpkin from Tennessee, and that's fine. I, nobody knows me. You don't, you know, hardly anybody on the internet knows me. They don't know that I, you know, I have 40 years of experience in the construction industry. I worked in architecture for 10 years. I actually did structural drawings like these for structural engineers that were stamped, uh, that were reviewed and stamped by structural engineers. That's how. The architecture firm that I worked for, that I became an associate, an associate at, uh, which is one step before partner, and I didn't want to become a partner at that firm. I wanted to start my own business, and so I did. I started a design build business. Okay, so I have dealt with these structural issues for a long time. Not in bridges. I'm not. 
claiming on them in external bridges, but the loads are similar, okay? And these harmonics, loads are loads. Gravity is gravity, guys. You know, it just it works. You know, at, on different scales, it does have it does have a tendency to have different uh, features, but pretty much, you know, loads are loads. So uh, the point, the only reason I brought that up is because because people, you know, obviously. I, we're all armchair. I mean, we're all armchair quarterbacks to a certain extent. Everybody is okay, unless you worked on this design team, and you understood the criteria you were working with. Then you're you're an armchair quarterback. Even if you're a structural engineer, you don't know what what went through the minds. And I'm admitting that myself. But what I'm also saying is that looking at this thing from pra from a practical standpoint, and I look at this. Sadly, sadly, people lost their lives. But I'm thinking now that it, that a lot more people would have lost their lives later. And this thing was eventually going to fail, fail anyway. And I'm gonna. I think I can prove that. And I think that um, you know a lot transpired after I made my video. They I, the news came out that there, an engineer had saw cracks and warned. Um, you know of the, the the cracks and you know the thing about it is at that point really the guy should have gone out even if he had had to stop traffic uh, himself he should have done that the Department of Transportation was notified they should have they should have shut the road down you can all these things you can say should have been done and to me it's an edge and the reason I mentioned this about the loss of life is because when I say this is an educational uh, thing for me it's a painful uh, education for everyone uh, because it could have been avoided and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about in in my mind this the people who designed this bridge never intended or were always relying on the cable stays okay and I'm, I'm going to show you right here this is a, a drawing of and I'm sorry if it's fuzzy or whatever but this is a drawing of the tension rods coming through these angled, these webbed members. And I, I resist saying truss, and I'm going to show you why I'm resisting saying truss here in a minute. That's another popular thing that's floating around about this. Um, if you look at the photographs, there are, there are no nodes coming up out of these points in, in the photographs. Then I assumed before I got too deep into this that the cables were going to be attached to that would actually provide structural support. And if you go over here and look, you'll see that these um, members are at the same angle and they are an extension. This is the way it should have been designed. I'm saying, excuse me, I got a frog in my throat this morning. I'm saying this is the way it should have been designed. Um, there was, the, I don't see this working, I don't see this ever working as a truss. And what I did was I pulled up a, a typical floor truss here, and I'm gonna try to line this up. Uh, this is in SketchUp, so I actually I have a physical, I have a physical, <laughs> a digital, I have a floor truss here that's laying on top of this photograph. Or this image and I'm gonna to try to line it up the best I can I'm gonna show you what a typical truss that we deal with in construction looks like versus this structure Let's see if I can get my view lined up here okay so you can see here I don't have this exactly lined up but it gives you an idea a typical truss would have consistent members at consistent angles and the reason for that is just because on a, on a truss, like a floor truss, you don't know exactly where the loads are going to be placed. They're, they can kind of roll, you know. So at some point, uh, say the load is dead center. Well, that means these two members are in compression, right? But once that, once that load hits this point here, it starts pulling on this one. So this one is in tension, okay? So depending on where you place the load, if I place the load here, is my is my um, do I have my mouse being tracked? I, I made this mistake once before. 
Oh, shoot. Yeah, it is. Okay. I made the mistake before of not tracking my mouse, and I was pointing at things, and people <laughs> were like, what are you pointing at? So if I, put the, if I place a load here, these two members here are in compression. Okay, now when I get to here, that load is still going down at this, this angular motion, and now it starts to pull on this one and this one. You see, so depending on where you are, these members have to be able to, to be tensioned or compressed, okay? And you see they're all, they're all equally spaced, and they're, until you get to the end, it's the same configuration. Now, look at this bridge, okay? This, you, say I place a load here, okay? Say 100 people are standing here. This member, um, this this member would be uh, in if there was a load here. Say there's a snow load. I know it's probably does snow in Florida, but I'm saying if there's a load here, this load this member needs to be in compression. Okay. Um, somebody's texting me. Just give me a minute. Hold on. Sorry. Um, we're supposed to have thunderstorms here in a little bit. Um, in a normal case, you know, say there's a load placed here, that that is in compression, and then this becomes in tension. Okay, now go back to your design. Okay, how do you get the thing about a truss is? Um, it's all about connections. Okay, these rods, these tension rods, are not connected to each other in any way. Okay. These rods should have been placed in tension their entire lifespan, okay? The way you would have done that was gone ahead and made, made these cables, made these cable stays structural as someone I think was counting on, I'm telling you, I think the engineers were counting on these being more, well, Okay, the design calls for them to, to meet the pedestrian loads. Right here it is. Right there it is, to meet pedestrian loads, okay? Um, this, but to me, the way this bridge was designed, these were going to take on most of the load, okay? And even if they weren't designed, uh, these connections would have been very important. And I know this picture's not very good, but the connection between these stays, and I'm not calling them cables anymore because apparently they were just pipes. I assumed in the beginning that this was going to be cables that were wrapped, kind of like the Golden Gate Bridge. If you've ever been across the Golden Gate Bridge, there's many, many cables and then they're wrapped. So they look like one big cable, that they're multiple cables. And if you look at the photograph, <clears throat> Uh, you'll see all these little nodes sticking out of, t of the tops of these these concrete bulges right here. And um, I guess, well, how am I supposed to summarize this? It, the, this, this is a matter of um, design failure and implementation failure, okay? I think what's going to happen, and again, this is educational for me. I'm trying to make my predictions in my head and then I will learn, if I'm wrong, I will learn the hard way. But if I'm right, my, I can assume that my, my, contract, my assumptions about this are correct. Okay, so this, for me, this is educational. I'm not trying to be a know-it-all or anything like that. This is all, for me, educational, okay? But these the way this should have been designed and the way i think in the backs of the minds of the engineers because of this requirement right here for pedestrian loads they, these members should have been if you look at my original video I, you can tell i assumed that these members were in line with these cables what i thought were groups of cables to always be in tension okay they were never meant to be in compression these cables Cables are never in compression. They're always in tension, okay, in a, on a suspension bridge, <laughs> okay? So, and the reason I assumed that is because 
there's no way if these have tie rods in them or some kind of reinforced steel that's tensioned it's hard to get that system to go into compression once you've tensioned the cables because they're in tension right you either pre-tension them and pour the concrete around them and they stay in tension or you post tension them and that's what they were doing on this system if you go back here or here you will see that the, there are openings here where they can go in and tension these rods and when the bridge failed they were tensioning this this system you know these rods right here there's a video um, if I can think about it later I'll link to it and you've probably seen it if you're following the story at all where a, a dash cam shows the workers on top of this supposedly tensioning this um, which really to me wouldn't do any good I mean putting let's say you tension you tension this span right here what does that do all, all it does <laughs> I'm putting my hand up here like you can see it all that does is tension that section okay in that by tensioning this you're putting tension on this okay and none of this goes into compression um, uh, until the loads are placed on it now once you place the loads now you've got compression right and these these do not act as a as a truss if you go back to my truss over here you'll see that in this diagram it's ex explicitly shown that you got a little truss action going on here now my my point is is that if you didn't want these to be structural you should have designed this like a truss okay and then you could have just put your pretty little cables up here or pipes or whatever later this might have worked okay but you can't you couldn't have used you would have had to have structural steel either um, trusses are not made out of tensioned uh, typical trusses are not made out of tensioned material they're they are made out of material that then is when loads are put on them like I was saying before can be put in tension or compression as the load changes on the member okay because that's what happens as the lo load rolls across that these become compressed or tension or in tension and if these my point my whole point is that these should have been designed to carry the load this these tension these tension cables or pipes whatever you want to call them should have been just like shown this load should have been taken from this point all the way up to here on every one of these okay then this bridge becomes a cable stay or a tension bridge and you don't have to worry about that you know compression then what happens is you only have compression between I'll say compression the loads that um, that are placed between these members now are they <laughs> they put uh, tension in the center of the span uh, or compression but it, then it T tensions it as it goes as the load goes this way but you're always if you've always got loads in tension pulling up uh, this way that's the way it should have designed been designed or you should have had a truss that worked by itself it's a com the failure is actually the design and the implement and well because of the design that caused the implementation to be wrong does that make sense it, the only way this would have worked is if they had in, kept the shoring, the false work, under this bridge. And I wish I had copied that picture. There's a picture, there's an illustration somewhere showing when they actually poured these spans that they had false work under the entire bridge. Okay? <clears throat> and that was, once the concrete set, they removed that and swung the bridge around into place okay that they should have had at least something what's strange is the failure took uh, see something mid-span might not have even saved this bridge because the failure actually came over here uh, when they were 
what might have happened is when they were tensioning this rod here they were, they were probably tensioning this one because this one is tensioned from the other end so if they were tensioning these or this one it might have actually pulled through if, if the concrete had not had time to cure they might have pulled the other end of this rod through the concrete and so at that point you lost your entire structural system and all you had at that point were concrete you know um, beams that were not reinforced properly so I'm getting all kinds of calls here it's a business day for me and I gotta run but I'm just trying to clarify my point about the structural issues I think there was a big mix up in design I think um, again these members should have been designed to carry loads it would have been fine the suspen suspension bridges have been used for thousands of years the it, it doesn't put a, a tremendous amount of load on each cable system you know those loads are distributed evenly they come back down over here you see um, <laughs> this little span would have been help would have helped to carry this larger span you see that's what happens these now the loads are shared between these you see it's an entire system when you do it properly and and this was just a bungle this was this this is just a, one big cluster <laughs> foobar so anyway i gotta run sorry guys i hope uh i hope that makes my point a little clear more clear about where i stand because a lot of people were saying what I was saying was incorrect and they weren't showing all these blurbs about stiffness and uh, pedestrian loads structural design to meet pedestrian loads all of that which they assumed at 90, 90 pounds per square foot I figured that up it's like 500,000 pounds guys just on that one uh, spray, uh, span anyway gotta run thanks a lot for watching